back him down. Spider to Wybanan. The line slides to the left. Watch the young back cut down the defensive end, but there's a beautiful banana. There's three quarterbacks in this football team. Whichever one starts, starts. Whichever one don't, will back them out. Period. Cut and dry. Next. Are you not entertained? Is this not why you are here? Yeah, well, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. Welcome to the TW Podcast. Today we're going to have an interview with David Sarton, talk a little bit about coaching and a little question that we seem to always get asked, as well as we're also going to have the WrestleMania 36 recap, um, you know, as well as we're going to cover ourselves uh, three and out, as well as Netflix movie of the week. But let's get right into it. And here's our interview with Coach Sarton. All right. Joining the podcast now, we have David Sarton. Don't call me Dave. Um, you know, that is true. Uh, David and I have worked together for uh, the last couple of months, but we've known each other for quite a long time. And you know, we know each other. He's a friend from work. So, um, you know, David serves as our defensive line coach. He's also uh, the assistant head coach for the Finlandia Lions. Uh, has a very uh, broad uh, coaching background in Division Two as well as Division Three. Uh, but David, welcome to the podcast. Hey, it's great to be here. I never thought when I woke up this morning I'd be on a podca- podcast, and I absolutely love it. <laughs> That's great to hear. It's good to see you know your face. You know, sometimes uh, well, I was impressed when I saw seen. the. I was impressed when I saw the fifty nine plus likes on uh, YouTube the other day from the first week. So you know, week two, let's make it double, triple. Let's see what happens. <laughs> let's see what we can do. Um, but you know, let's get into today's topic, all right? Uh, what I want to discuss is uh, the age-old question we seem, as, as, as football coaches, we consistently get asked. So is this, is it like a part-time job? Like once the season's over, you guys just, you know, just hang out for the rest? Or you got like another job you got to do? And you know, what, what's, your, what's your take on that? The worst possible question, because as soon as you get that question, it's like, shut down. I really don't want to talk to you. I want to move on to the next person. Um, It's the same thing like when the high school football, nobody asks the high school football coach. They just assume that like they coach and teach. Well, we're doing that. We're doing the same thing year round. We just don't go to a classroom. We're still teaching kids. We're still around them in the weight room. We're still monitoring their academics. And it just, it it gets very old to the people out there. It just gets an old, frustrating question to keep asking. Ask it to Nick Saban. What's he going to tell you? It makes no (laughs) sense. You don't, you assume those guys, nobody asked that to Nick Saban. There's no question. Retired Mark D'Antonio. You know, they just assume because you don't have those, you're not at those big time schools that you just show up and roll the balls out and go home. Right. Now I was, uh, once I was talking to my, uh, my friend, Scott, I was right when I first got uh, the offensive line job here at Finlandia and, you know, it's a full-time job. And, you know, before that, when I was still living in Escanaba, I was just a high school coach and his mom looked at him and said, when's Travis is going to go find a regular job, like a real job? Like he can't just volunteer and coach forever. And I was just dying laughing. Like, it's does so she bad, think like, like, it, like think it's, it's, it's just so common that people think that uh, our whole job is all we do is show up to practice, blow a whistle, yell, make sure these plays get done right, get to a game and everything's uh, set to go. It's it's kind of funny you bring that up because, and I'm not trying to throw my mom under the bus. <laughs> we all know that I love her dearly, and she's a great lady. But when I was at Warper College in Iowa, I was a graduate assistant and kind of, you know, coaching, working on my master's, doing all that. And I went home for Christmas break, and she's like, well, when are you going to go get a real job? And I'm like, I kind of like, lost of my shit a little bit and I got frustrated because I was still educating my parents and my mom about this isn't just roll the balls out now 
over the last 20 years, obviously between, you know, being at Grand Valley and being at Michigan Tech and Finlandia and, you know, the various stops, they've come to realize like it's not as they start to live through the ups and downs, the highs and lows, the recruiting, the kid doesn't do well academically, they're trying to get the kid squared up in summer school. But just at that time, I think you're, it was like, oh my God, mom, you don't think I have a full-time job? And I kind of got very frustrated and upset. And let's just say it became a small discussion at the Sarton household at the time, but I think it's great that your family friend brought that up. And I feel like I had that same conversation with my own family. And I was like, and, but now they're 100% supportive. You've seen them. They're all at the home games, away games. Um, they they constantly ask, but I think it's just educating people that, yes, I'm not the D-line coach at Michigan State, but and I don't make his salary, but at the same token, you have the same responsibility, if not more, than he does. Right. You know, like people think that our off seasons um, could be a country club atmosphere where uh, most of your time is spent hanging out with one another and shooting uh, the BS around the office, which True. there's, there's always BS in any office you ever go to. Oh, there's, there's always water cooler talk wherever you go. <laughs> we just but, get a bad rap. <laughs> you know, but they don't understand the, the grind you're putting in on the recruiting trail. I don't think a lot of people realize as soon as November, December hits, we are on the road for, two to three weeks at a time. I mean, my first time I got to Finlandia, I was, yeah. on, the, I was on the road for like four straight weeks. Yeah, like, and I don't, I don't want to hear anybody say they hate going to a restaurant and eating by themselves. <laughs> What's wrong with that? If you're on the road recruiting and all you've done, you've stopped at five high schools, you've talked to the minimally the secretary at each school, you've talked to minimally the head coach at the school, You've talked to maybe a kid at each school. I mean, there's five people at one school, three people that you've talked to at one school, and now you multiply that by five. That's 15 new people that you've talked to every day. I can't wait to go to Ruby Tuesdays and sit down and have the salad bar and eat by myself. Like, I love it. Like, and you can't eat, you can't go to a restaurant and eat by yourself. Like, that drives me nuts. And that's what you end up doing, as you said, like being on the road, you know, recruiting and doing and doing those things. No doubt. You know, it's – I just – you know, and then you look at your own squad. I mean, there's so many times where, you know, in our off season, we are working with our players at a diligent pace uh, to make sure they're making their academic goals. But, you know, we're also trying to make sure we're developing them uh, mentally – in a football mindset and physically as a football mindset. Um, but it's, it's always that, you know, they don't understand what we do in a given day. I mean, I, we might wear four or five different hats in one day. There's, there's days 100%. I gotta be a counselor. There's days I'm trying to be an admissions rep. Uh, a role days model. I'm being the head coach. I mean, there's a friend, a friend. I mean, you're, you're Sometimes just doing everything. You gotta, you gotta lay the hammer down and be the, the friend that's a jerk. <laughs> um there's a then that's putting it politely but I mean there's a lot of different things that go into a day and I, I don't think people necessarily understand that where you take the kid that shows up to your office every day that's the easy kid to deal with how about the kid that never you know never shows up and you need to talk to him I mean how are you trying to reach that kid and maybe a different angle and different ways that you can talk to him and then you throw in the whole social media thing. Like you could, you could call a kid and he's not going to answer. But if you text him within five minutes, he'll get back to you. Like, I just called you, dude. Like, but yet you text me back. Like that blows my mind to this day. That is a very common thing now. Like, you know, a little PSA, if any recruits are listening, if a coach calls you, you should answer or at least return the call. Don't just uh, don't just leave it out there um, and shoot us a text a, back two minutes later. Ring. Don't give me a ring and then hit ignore because I know <laughs> what's happening. Like 
it's you're not especially now with the corona you're not that busy you can pick up the phone no question that don't don't go radio silent that's the most like I be do. honest like if it's something if we're not the fit for you or whatever it is like, just, just tell me tell us. Like, okay. because because as an assistant i got the head coach barreling down my ass like what's going on with johnny and I don't have an answer, and the only answer I have is crickets. Well, then is the head coach sitting there saying, is he really reaching out to me, or is he just giving me a bluff? Is he just kind of lying? Like, I just let me know. If you don't want to come to Finlandia or any school, I will move on, and our staff will move on. Right. And it's so much easier and cleaner just to have it that way than, oh, I feel bad. And I sit there and try to tell every recruit if there's ten if you if it's like major league baseball, if you if you go to bat ten times and get three hits, you're in the Hall of Fame. If I have ten kids visit and you get three to come to your school, you're doing a great job. And if your staff does that, next thing you know, there's you know, you can sit there and do the math. I'm not great at math, but you can sit there and do the math and figure out that's how you get a recruiting class and but if you're just lingering there lingering there it gets hard it's impossible there's no question about that and it's frustrating as a coach um you know and sometimes when you you know we're on the other side of it we're not returning a call it's i feel pretty upset that i do that but sometimes that happens in life but um, yeah, I yeah, but I feel like the the high school ki- or the the coach returns the call or the text a lot quicker than I mean the high school the high like high school kids out there just return a text or a call regardless. It's not going to be good news if it's not good news. Then it is what it is. But right. and right. if a coach can't live with that answer, then. I good good for them but I mean I think in myself if myself has always been in a sense where I'd rather know than not know no at least question. like in high school when that girl wouldn't go on a date with you at least she told you no I mean some of you high school sometimes kids out there they won't even tell you no right I mean sometimes they won't even tell you no that girl in high school at least said no you were embarrassed and upset in the hallway in front of your boys and everything, but at least you knew. You didn't have to continue to pursue her. Correct. You, you had to make up a new game plan. Yes, you needed, you needed to go find the next one, and that's what it comes down to is going to find the next one. And, hey, like they say, love the one you're with, and we'll, like any coach will love the one that's with them, and we'll love the one that's with you. <laughs> so how is uh, your work from home – how has this uh, been for you the last uh, – going on two, almost three weeks now? Uh, I can't say I love it. You know, I like the social interaction. I like seeing the guys in the office, not only, like, the people on our staff, but the other people that work in our building. Um, that's been the that's been the hard part is just, you know, the social interaction and seeing people. Uh, for, the know, people I, for the people who don't know you, David – uh, David is a very big social butterfly. Um, his office is the is usually uh, the place where you will find two or three people having a conversation at the very least, Typically, if not four yeah. or five. I would say that that that's common. That's uh, and, and you when when you don't have that, all of a sudden it's like you wake up one day and it's gone. It's like holy cow. Yeah, I, I know. I know. For me, the best thing that I have is. I don't have to look across my room and just see your see your office now. So <laughs> you missed it. That's a lie. <laughs> you, I, think, it's, I think I think our whole staff misses it. Yeah, I, I mean the that's thing where, I miss the most. I, I like there's a lot of things that I miss, but those random days when Milo would swing in, <laughs> and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, there's there's a kid in the office, or there's Milo, and he's he was just getting to the point where he was starting to. Uh, crawl around and we were talking about like we need we need to get a, a child proof this office and everything and now <laughs> when we get back from the corona he's going to be upright and walking and no like don't go down the stairs yeah he'll be sprinting and uh as soon so as he we, sees me probably start crying and <laughs> he uh, did that. 
you know, I'm a sell little kid too. I mean, that's where, you know, we stay in pretty good contact as a staff where we uh, try oh, to get yeah. together a couple times a week and have conversations about what's going on. But I mean, half the time we get on the conversation, we're just trying to play catch up with what's going on in our lives. Um, but you know, those are the things you, that you take for granted at work, the, the people you work with. And, the people you see every day. Right. And, right. And what's going on and how they're doing and just like those simple, simple little things. And, you know, I mean, we alluded to it a little bit, like every office has, has the um, water cooler talk, like, you know, just the random, like, who has the best frozen pizza out there? That <laughs> conversation that lasts for four or five, 10 well, minutes. Well, we know or, that's lots of matzo and Jack's pizza. I mean, this for me, it's lots of matzo without a doubt. Um, I know Barstool Sports had lots of matzah on their pizza review. I really wasn't impressed with their review. I thought it would be stronger. Ooh. I'm not going to lie. Um, she I, thought, upset. I, I was a little bit upset because I actually took the time to, to watch the whole 15-minute review. Um, I, I I don't think they were a fan of the um, – the, they were a fan of the cheese, but like the, the – the crust, I don't think that they were really a big fan of. They didn't score high on the crust. No. But, see, this is like the interaction that you miss um, at the daily, you know, the daily office. Now, uh, have you watched anything good lately? You, you got anything out there for the peeps to start watching? Well, it's kind of old, but been watching uh, Designated Survivor. Okay. It's kind of a small spinoff of um, – I want to say House of Cards slash uh, what's the one? I can't think of it. It was on Showtime. Showtime. With uh, Homeland. Homeland. It has okay. a spin on a spin on that. Um, pretty pretty good. Actually, it's going to be off a little bit for the non-football or for the football coaches out there. But there's a soccer show on <laughs> Netflix. Um. It's about the English Premier League. It wasn't bad. It was season two. I think it's Sutherland Till I Die, and it's about their their team and their uh, organization. Kind uh, kind of enjoyed that. Anything else? Well, everybody's watched the Tiger King. What about the Tiger King new episode? Uh, that's 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 a big topic coming up here. There's... Like, how do they did they have this planned? How does that work? There's no shot. Like, all of a sudden, somebody got portrayed in there. They didn't like me going, hey, you guys want another episode? I'll give you one. Well, like, so they had all this footage waiting around thinking, like, it was going to blow up? <laughs> or did it blow <laughs> up and not blow up? I mean, that's like, what the last podcast I said. Is it is it something that we like because we've just been sitting at home and we're bored and we're like, looks interesting, and then you watch it, you're like, that's no, pretty good. Is it pretty good or is it actually that I'm just bored enough to think it's really good? I I thought it was really good, but with the thing I didn't understand, I must have gotten up and gone to the bathroom or something because all of a sudden Joe Exotic was in jail. Like, did they? I don't remember them coming to arrest him. I just remember him being all of a sudden in jail. Well, he was on the run, and then he got caught eventually, I guess. Yeah, I. That's the one part. The um. The the producer, that that's a whole nother argument, like shady. Like I don't know. Yeah. Did he? Did he? You're telling me like a guy that's making that didn't have any of that. How did they film the videos? If all the videos got burned in the alligator pit. We will we will find out. I assume. How did they? You you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I don't mean to be a spoiler for anybody that's out there that hasn't watched it yet, but. That would be like us creating a highlight tape after the season. And I was the video coordinator and told you I left every game. I lost every game film, but yet I made a highlight tape. <laughs> I mean, does that make sense? Like, Not much. Coach, we be, don't have the video the only of this contra- game, but I have a highlight tape. The, the contradictory would be, is the footage all – from his show he did have on YouTube or wherever they were posting that show for a little bit, if all the it was from footage from there, but I don't know. There's some there's some there's some 
And get I on think the, Netflix makes call up the Oklahoma stuff. penal system. See if we can get Joe Exotic on the on the mic. <laughs> I think and, we need uh, to get him see, on the podcast. You know that that would be a really funny deal. But that that might be a little far out of my reach right now. But I, I think so. Or get on uh, what's her name? I can Carol Basson. <laughs> She's become the most popular person in America. Uh, don't get me started on her. I know. I heard. I heard the last episode. There were too many memes. Now uh, we got planned for the rest of the day as we get ready to settle uh, off. I'll here. probably go for uh, go for a walk slash run. More walk here in a little bit. Um, that's about it. I've done a couple puzzles with uh, with Heather, my girlfriend. Uh, we're waiting on some other puzzles to get. Um, I'm probably a little bit closer to getting that Xbox, but I don't know. <laughs> Um, that kind of about sums it up. What have you been up to? You know, grinding, uh, trying, cleaning, uh, cleaning and watching recruiting. New shows and series. Recruiting but, and recruiting. But all right, David, I appreciate, I appreciate you. Uh, I, oh, okay. Hey man, I appreciate you for coming on the show. <laughs> no, it was fun. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I've never really been, done a podcast before. Um, thoroughly enjoyed it. Well, and uh, looking forward to seeing and hearing episode two. Well, we'll see if we double or triple up. And uh, if that's the case, i got to have you on more often. Well, what if we could get a way where we could get like three or four people on there at once, like a Zoom I, actual meeting? That could definitely happen. We could go live guys. with the Lanskis' uh, T, his hitting net for golf. <laughs> We need a live. It would be like Charles Barkley on the, on the big break or whatever he was with Hank Haney. We could we could videotape him hitting golf balls in the backyard. Just gotta stay six feet away from each other. That's we'll have Should to figure good. out a way to do that. But all right, David, all right, stay safe. I'll talk to you soon. You stay safe too. Have a good one. All right, one. thanks for having me on. All right, now we're gonna talk about WrestleMania. All right, WrestleMania was this last Saturday and Sunday. It was intriguing it was different and i really don't know how i feel about it but i kind of do all right i think it was very difficult for all those performers out there uh you know and they've been doing it for the last couple of weeks where you know they haven't been performing in front of a crowd and i know you know watching all the documentaries and uh, wrestling podcasts you know listening to those podcasts i have understand that you feed off the crowd if you're a wrestler. So I imagine WrestleMania was rather difficult uh, for those guys that were involved and did not have that instant reaction from the crowd. And you could, you know, as a viewer, when you sit there and you're watching it, you're going, this is, uh, this seems a lot more uh, not as fun without the crowd. That background crowd noise and the, the pops that the crowd makes, makes watching it way better. All right, um, but we're going to go into a little bit of recap. You know, it was it was so big you couldn't have it on just one night. It had to be, you know, a two night special because it was so big it couldn't fit in one night, which I think is a complete fabricated lie. But you know, whatever makes them happy. Um, you know, I think WrestleMania Sundays have usually been a seven hour event for me, um, and this time it got split up into. Uh, two, three and a half hour segments. Um, so, uh, you know, let's start off with just the host. Okay. Rob Gronkowski. All right. I suppose he would probably feed better off if there was a crowd there, but with him just kind of doing his monologue, just look like uh, very uncomfortable, very um, not enjoyable to watch. You know, at some point he won the 24-7 title. Um, why? I mean, that's a big question for me is why. Uh, if you're bringing him in to be a pro wrestler here soon, then I just think that is uh, – I would rather see Pat McAfee uh, host your WrestleMania and make me laugh because I guarantee you that guy would have made me laugh other than Gronkowski. Uh, but having him win the 24-7 title uh, kind of in a hodgepodge kind of way was kind of a little off-putting to me. Um, but let's, let's, let's get right into it. You know, I want to talk about the matches I actually thought were pretty good. I'll probably just tell you what happened if I didn't find it very good. Uh, but the first match on uh, Saturday, April 4th, 
uh, Alexa Bliss versus the and Nikki Cross versus the Kabuki Warriors uh, for the women's tag team championship. It was it was all right. Um, you know what I did find out in that match is because uh, right after that comes the Elias Corbin match. There was there was you could really tell the crowd noise wasn't there. Um, you know Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross defeated the Kabuki Warriors for the tag team titles. Um, was an all right match. Uh, wasn't uh, in love with it to start the night. Usually when you get that first match, I want to see something completely uh, high energy, high everything. Uh, I feel like I didn't get that out of that match, right? Uh, going on to the next match, it was Elias who defeated King Corbin. Um, now, Elias is one of my favorite current wrestlers. Um, it was I, I was telling my wife, I think this was the first time I've actually seen him wrestle. Um it was a good match. It was very hard hitting. There was a lot of, you know, going from that first match into this match, there was a lot more, like, they were selling it more to me. All right? It felt more real. The crowd noise didn't really affect me, you know, I because they kept being uh, vocal on everything. They were really hitting into each other. You could really uh, feel the impact of that match. But I thought this was probably, uh, for me, one of the top five matches of the night. Um, it was or not just the night, the whole pay-per-view, uh, I thought it was phenomenal. Uh, Becky Lynch uh, defeated Shayna Baszler. Uh, Shayna Baszler scares the hell out of me. Uh, she could definitely uh, hurt me for no questions asked there. Uh, I mean, Becky Lynch, you know, she's the man. She took care of business. She's probably my favorite female wrestler out there. Uh, I thought it was the best uh, female match throughout the entire pay-per-view. I thought it was phenomenal, um, you know, really good match, all right? Then we kind of got into a Sami Zayn versus Daniel Bryant uh, for the Intercontinental Championship. Um, to be honest with you, I didn't have anything invested in this match. Sami Zayn is kind of vanilla to me, you know, having Cesaro and Shinsuke Nakamura with him really could care less. Um, you know, Daniel Bryan, you know, the Yes Movement has moved on from uh, at least my standpoint. Um, but, you know, Sami Zayn won the match. It was kind of underwhelming to me, uh, but, uh, you know, moving on. Um, now there was the triple threat ladder match, okay, for the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. Uh, you know, it was just, it was kind of weird that just there was one group competing for the tag team titles, all right? John Morrison defeated Jimmy Uso and Kofi Kingston. I think they had a lot bigger things planned for this match, uh, but due to the coronavirus, I'm sure there was only a set number of people you could have in the match or whatever it was. Um, you know, it kind of had a controversial ending. I'll give them credit. I thought the ending was great. I thought it was a great idea. I thought it was phenomenal. You know, everybody's at the top of the ladder. You know, they're fighting for it. They got a bridged ladder off the big ladder. Now you're sitting there going, Oh, something, something big's going to happen. Um, and then everybody's up there. They're all fighting for the title. And um, they all they took it off the hook. And all of a sudden, somebody pushes off uh, John Morrison. John Morrison falls with both tag team titles. Him and The Miz end up still staying tag team titles. You know, there's, they're the champs. Um, next match, uh, Kevin Owens versus Seth Rollins. No DQ match. Uh, Kevin Owens is probably my favorite current wrestler. Um, and I thought this match was actually very, very good. Um, you know, there was a lot of physicality into it. There was a lot of uh, smack talk going back and forth to one another. Um, it, was, it was a good match. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Couldn't say much more about it than I just thoroughly enjoyed it, all right? Then Braun Strowman, the monster among men, defeated Goldberg. All right, for the Universal Championship, this match lasted two minutes, ten seconds. And to be honest with you, I think that's all that Goldberg can give us at this point. You know, a couple spears, a couple jackhammers, everything like that. Uh, made Braun Strowman look real strong. Um, and that's a good thing. You know, they're really trying to get him to that next level. I mean, this is his first title, um, which is great. You know, I'm happy for Braun Strowman. Wish, uh, wish he could put on more of a match, you know, as being one of the big uh, matches of the night, one of the main events, you know, that was, 
that was kind of underwhelming to me that we could only go two minutes and ten seconds. Uh, you know, coming up, you know, was the biggest match of the night for the first night. Um, so let's get to that. You know, the main event, uh, The Undertaker uh, versus AJ Styles uh, in a Boneyard match. Now, the Boneyard match was shot uh, in a graveyard slash farm. It was very, I really enjoyed it. It was something unique. It was something different. It wasn't just sitting there fighting in the ring like we've seen for the last, you know, ever. You know, it was a chance to get out and have a little bit of interaction. There were some points in the match that were a little uh, roll your eyes, kind of say. Uh, you know, kind of cheesy. Um, especially when, like, Luke uh, Gallows and Carl Anderson, they pop up out of nowhere. Then all of a sudden parts of the barn fall over and there's guys in black hooded garb getting ready to take on the undertaker the undertaker stand in the middle he's like well let's get this on but i'll tell you this i was excited that it was more of the american badass undertaker uh than the regular undertaker that we've been used to for the last probably 10 years uh you know i was kind of excited to see that you know aj styles and him they had a good little bout there at some point, you thought The Undertaker was about to get buried. AJ Styles on that tractor. And then out of nowhere, Undertaker got all that hole and standing behind him. Gets him in the hole eventually. Hits him with, um, you know, well, AJ Styles hit him with the shovel. But somehow, AJ Styles got in to the grave, got buried. Undertaker wins. And that was the first night, all right? That was night one. And if you ask me, the best matches from night one, if I had to rank them, I would say um, Kevin Owens versus Seth Rollins, Becky Lynch, Shayna Baszler, and Elias and King Corbin. Those are my three favorite matches from that first night. All right, moving on to Sunday, part two. All right, um, you know, part two. Uh, it was a little bit uh, long. I felt there was some things that kind of got drug out in this uh, match or this card. Um, you know, the first match of the night was Charlotte Flair versus Rhea Ripley for the NXT Women's title. First off, let's talk about that for a second. Charlotte Flair for the NXT. I mean, this is where she started. Like, right? Why are we back to this point where we're letting her fight for NXT titles? Like, I understand you want to push uh, Rhea Ripley, and I think she's a hell of a talent, but it just didn't seem, in my mind, uh, something Charlotte would want. You know, I want to be the NXT champion. Like, she won the Royal Rumble. She's going to want one of the, the titles that are on one of the premiere shows, not the up-and-coming league. I know that. I'm curious to see what they do. Charlotte defeated Rhea Ripley uh, by submission. And it was, you know, a 20-minute match. It was actually a really good match. Uh, I was, you know, very thoroughly surprised. Uh, the next match, which I could care completely less than, didn't think it was good, didn't enjoy it at all, Aleister Black versus Bobby Lashley. Just a singles match. Apparently they've been feuding pretty, pretty much for the last couple weeks. Didn't really sense that feud. Didn't really feel much of anything. Um, did not enjoy that match at all. Alistair Black did defeat Bobby Lashley. Um, average, 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 average. Uh, going to the next match, all right? Another singles match, Otis versus Dolph Ziggler. All right, now this is a match I, I, I've been paying attention to for a while. Ever since my boy Otis basically got left, you know, he thought he had a Valentine's Day, thought he had one, didn't work out. All right, um, it was a pretty good match. I thought uh, I thought they did a really good job. Otis ended up defeating Dolph Ziggler. It was it was it was a good match, and I like Otis. If I didn't like Otis, I probably wouldn't enjoy the match. But uh, Otis got his due, got his payback on Dolph for kind of uh, messing with him for the last couple of weeks. Now the next match, <clears throat> I thought is you know. Probably the main event, probably the best match. Before I even, when I thought about watching WrestleMania, I said Edge versus Randy Orton will be the greatest match of the card. 
And I didn't think it was. I, I, you know, I, I'll tell you this. I'm really going to say thank you to, you know, I thought, you know, it's a great performance. I thought they did a good job for what they had. You know, going around, uh, you know, when you got a last man standing match, you're expecting some very hardcore elements of which they gave us. But you, you want to see that interaction with the crowd when they go out into the crowd section. You want to see that interaction. They didn't get any of that. There are some camera views and on some tight hallways that didn't really work out very well. Um, one camera guy got knocked out, fell over. They had the, the Russian camera guy coming in uh, into the warehouse. Now, what I can tell you is we got a hell of a uh, tour of the training facility down there in uh, Orlando, the NXT training facility. We got a, we got a good look into the weight room. Uh, just about everywhere that you could go in that building, I'm pretty sure they brought us through. He even got to see behind where the, the performers are coming out. It was about a, a three-foot uh, width hallway that they always had to walk out and kind of give their uh, spiel. But, uh, you know, this was the longest match uh, of the evening, and I think the entire pay-per-view at 36 minutes, 35 seconds. Um, Edge ended up defeating Randy Orton. You know, at some point I was getting very nervous. I saw a forklift, and... All of a sudden, there was a truck. They were beating the crap out of each other in this back um, room. And he was on this truck. And then all of a sudden, he got DD, Edge got uh, DDT'd through the, the truck tunnel cover. Thought that would be it. Was not. Then all of a sudden, they start climbing to the top of this uh, semi-trailer. And now I'm getting nervous. Like, I'm afraid of heights. I'm starting to get a little bit of sweats. Um, you know, then... There's some battling up there. Edge goes down. The count starts going. Randy Orton goes back, walks back down, grabs a couple chairs. First, you see the biggest ladder you've ever seen in your life. But Randy Orton grabs two chairs, moseys his way back up. Edge gets up before the 10 count. Now there's chairs involved. He's getting ready to whap them, gets speared. Randy ends up getting back up before the 10 count. And, you know, now it's... He gets at some point he gets an RKO. I mean, they kept going back and forth, back and forth. So all of a sudden there was a winner and it was Edge. Uh Edge doing his own kind of concerto uh to get the victory. You know, I thought it was really funny that the official uh at some point where Randy Orton was going to smash Edge with chairs was like, Oh, don't do it, Randy, he's got kids. Not understanding that, you know, Randy Orton has his own kids and he's a family guy too, like I thought it was rather funny that they play on that string, uh, you know. Don't 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 hurt Edge, um, but Edge got the win. I, I thought it was as I said. I thought it was a good match. I thought it could have been more if there was people there. There was more crowd reaction. It could have been better. Uh, the next match, I really did not. This is for the Raw Tag Team Championships: the Street Profits uh, versus. Angel Garza and Austin Theory. I had nothing invested in this match. Uh, the Street Profits ended up winning, uh, retaining. But, you know, it was only a six-minute tag match, which tells you kind of match they thought it would be. Uh, it was kind of just a filler for me. Uh, next match um, basically was the Fatal Five-Way Elimination match uh, for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Uh, it was Bailey, Lacey Evans, Naomi, Sasha Banks, Tamina, this was a pretty good match. Um, went for about 19 minutes. Uh, Bailey ended up retaining her title. Um, you know, it was just a good match. I didn't pay attention fully uh, at this match, but I do remember the parts I did watch, I did thoroughly enjoy. All right, we're off to the final two matches of the night. All right. And we're coming up to the weirdest one of them all. All right. The Fiend Bray Wyatt versus John Cena and a Firefly Funhouse match. Now, me and my friends were texting during this match, and there was a lot of what the hell is this? What is going on? This is weird. Um, but I I really enjoyed it. I thought it was so weird. They kept going, uh, you know, John Cena back to his start. All of a sudden, he's wearing his trunks. He came out on the first time. Uh, he goes back to his Dr. Thugonomics, you know, they even did it for Bray Wyatt, kind of go back through his lineage of how he got through. Uh, it, it wasn't a match. 
it was just a, a art piece watching it. Um, somehow, uh, Bray Wyatt did defeat John Cena. I thought it was very unique. I thought it was something inventive. I thought it was something uh, that, for the runtime of 13 minutes, kept me fully fully happy the entire time, wondering what's going to happen next. All right? uh, then the big main event, Drew McIntyre versus Brock Lesnar for the WWE Championship. Now, I knew this game, this fight was going to be a ultimate all-out slugfest. Drew McIntyre's a big dude, throwing out Claymore kicks left and right. You know, Brock Lesnar, maybe one of the scariest human beings on this planet. I mean, a guy who, who, who performs at a very high level, uh, is a UFC champion at some point in his life, played NFL for I mean, this guy's done everything. He is an outrageous large human who is very, very athletic. Um, he's been a champion for a while. Uh, Drew McIntyre won the Royal Rumble, got the opportunity to go and fight Brock Lesnar. It was a good match. Now, this match only was four minutes and 35 seconds. You know, it was quick. But that's what, you know, they covered all the bases of everything I'd want to see out of that match. I want to see high impact. I want to see a lot of uh, power moves between the two of them. And I want to find out who's more powerful. There's some, uh, like, he got a Claymore kick early on, and there was, a, you know, an early kick out. Um, so, you know, we saw Suplex City. We saw an F5. And then, um, you know, it looked like Brock was about to win. Then Drew all of a sudden came out with Claymore kicks. Like, it was his, uh, it was the only thing he could do in the world was a Claymore kick. Uh, got a couple of them and ended up getting the title and was pretty, was pretty happy that Drew McIntyre got the title. Uh, you know, he's the guy who's going to defend it. He's the guy who's going to be on every show. Brock Lesnar's, you know, he's an attraction. He's not a, he's not a pro wrestler. He's going to show up at big events. He's going to put on a hell of a show, but he's not going to be wrestling week in, week out. But, you know, all together, I thought the pay-per-view was pretty good. Um, you know, as I said, it's very awkward. I got to take it with a grain of salt because my full, you know, I usually enjoy every match of the pay-per-view, especially WrestleMania. But when you're sitting there, there's not a crowd, there's there's not that interaction. They take that bit away from you. Um, but all in all, I thought it was a great, great pay-per-view. I enjoyed it. I um, hope you guys did too. But that goes for the WWE Mania recap. All right, now let's start wrapping up the show. Um, first, we're going to go with the Netflix movie of the week. Uh, this week's movie is going to be There Will Be Blood. This movie is probably in my top five favorite movies of all time. Uh, it's got Daniel Day-Lewis, which Daniel Day-Lewis might be one of the greatest method actors, maybe the best of all time. Um, he's playing an oil baron on this one. Uh, he's on a ruthless quest for wealth uh, during the California oil boom. Um, you know, does a lot of shady stuff. Very interesting movie. Uh, I don't want to give too much away, uh, but it's a great movie. It's on Netflix right now. I, if I were you, I'd give my, you know, give yourself an opportunity to go watch that. Uh, but then, all right, let's go to three and out. All right, first down, all right, the AFCA Clinic Library, you coaches out there, all right, the AFCA has given every uh, clinic tape that they had from the last, I don't know how long this is going back, but for the convention every year there is a many clinics, clinic tapes, these coaches go in there and they talk. Uh, they're giving those all free right now, all right? So if you go to AFCA.com, there should be a link on that front page. Uh, you follow what they ask you to do. On that page, it'll give you a login information as well as a password to get the free trial. Uh, you get to use that for the rest of this month. Uh, it's a great opportunity for young coaches um, to get on there and just figure out stuff you would like to do or the way uh, other people are doing it. It's a way to uh, figure out new ideas and generate, uh, you know, positive things. But that's free, all right? Second down. Today was supposed to be the start of the Masters, April 9th. This has got me rather upset, all right? But there is light. They're not going to cancel the tournament directly, okay? Um, you know, they're going to move it uh, to November 12th through the 15th. Uh, it seems a little bit fur, you know, far away from me. Uh, it's something we just have to deal with. But I, I remember the Masters, to me, was a holiday. Uh, I would, uh, you know, this is not a good idea for any uh, students out there to do, but when I was in college, I would skip my Thursday's class uh, to make sure that I could watch the Masters. 
Um, it was it, it was a holiday in my house. Move on. Third down. All right. I got a Madden league out there. Uh, it's filled with a bunch of friends, friends of friends. Uh, it's, it's a very fun league. We've been playing it for probably uh, two weeks now. Uh, we just got to the playoffs, um, which is making things very interesting at this point in time. Um, I'm going to pull up my little uh, the, the playoff bracket here. Uh, I could tell you that the best teams in the league uh, got their first round buys in the playoffs. Uh, that would be the Green Bay Packers on the NFC side and the Cardinals. Uh, the Packers went 15 0 and 1 thanks to a Bears tie in like week 16. Uh, kind of ruined everything. Um, thank you, Perkle, for that. Uh, you know, Dr. Favre, good down here. All right, the Cardinals, I believe he had a 13 and 3 year. It was a very competitive league because the Rams were in it, as well as the Cardinals uh, and the Seahawks. I mean, that, that, that division itself just dominated to get themselves in the playoffs. Um, but going over to the AFC side, uh, the Steelers, uh, who I believe went 14 and 2, uh, and then yours truly, the New York Jets, uh, we went 13 and 3. Uh, it was a pretty good season for the Jets, you know, just, just, just put it that way. Um, we got the first round by. That's what we were working for. I'm pretty excited about it. Um, but we got wild card weekend right now. All right. We're going to have the, the Kansas City Chiefs with the Jaybirds versus the Buffalo Bills and the Dirty Birds. All right. Uh, it's probably a pretty good matchup. I think they're playing tonight at some point. We'll find out uh, coming up next podcast where, uh, where we're at in the playoff bracket. Uh, staying in the AFC here, uh, we're at the Megatron Rocks. Uh, Texans versus the Wendell Woody uh, Titans. All right? I believe this game's already been played. I have not checked the score. I don't know who won the game. I assume that uh, that team will play me in the next round of the playoffs. God bless you. Good luck to you. All right, going to the NFC side over here on the right. All right, uh, I'm not quite sure what uh, the Cowboys' name is here, uh, but they, I believe they've already played. The Cowboys, nobody knows how they got into the playoffs this year. They were actually pretty much trash. Uh, but I assume that the Seahawks, the N11 attack, also known as my boy Pete, will probably dominate that game and get himself uh, in the next round. Uh, and then you got the Saints versus uh, the Rams, the fighting Skolanskis, all right? The fighting Skolanskis, don't, don't, don't take it for granted. Uh, he's got a good rushing attack. Well, who knows what Kareem Hunt's doing. But, you know, we'll find out uh, next week where uh, everything sits here in the FU support group, uh, Madden League. Um, should be a pretty good deal. Um, I assume that I will be in the Super Bowl. I, I You know, I, the league will probably listen to this podcast and think I'm being a little uh, cocky about it. Uh, but I feel pretty good. I know uh, in week 17, or no, it was week 16, I got beat by the Steelers. Uh, who are the other team that got, you know, they're pretty good. Uh, he's got Saquon Barkley, a few other guys, and we, we fancy draft. So uh, some of these teams are pretty stacked up, pretty good. Uh, but we're hoping, uh, you know, I'm hoping for a Jet Super Bowl victory this year. We'll find out. Who knows what the odds are. Uh, if not, it's too late to be out there. You know, I know uh, my buddy Kevin and my buddy Corey. I know they're uh, the bottom dwellers of the league. Can't wait to get try to fight for that first overall pick. Uh, we'll find out coming up here when the draft gets here at the end of the Super Bowl. But uh, thanks for listening to the podcast today. Uh, hope you guys are staying healthy out there. Make sure you wash your hands, and you guys have a great day. <laughs>